bright lights, high rollers. This is Las Vegas, Nevada, and until 2018, it was the only state where you could legally bet on sports. But today, you don't need a plane ride or a drive to the desert to get your legal sports betting fix. Welcome to Connecticut, one of 33 states to legalize sports betting in the last five years. While many people welcome the sports gambling gold rush, imagine being someone who has struggled with a gambling addiction, seeing apps that put a casino or sports book in the palm of your hand. Responsible gaming advocates tell me they're worried. When you're addicted, you gamble until your last dollar is gone, until you have no more access to money. And so you need to be pushed off the product somehow. But they hope an emerging technology that I'm about to show you can help protect people from what can be a life-ruining reality of problem gambling. This is The Race. It's been more than eight years since Brian Hatch says he last placed a bet. Hello and welcome to All in the Addicted Gamblers podcast. My name is Brian and I have lived experience with gambling harm. And today we're talking about recovery. He isn't afraid to take his podcast audience back to the lowest parts of his life, sitting at a blackjack table multiple nights a week, many times to five o'clock in the morning. And I was just in a position where, because of gambling, I never graduated college. You know, I was academically dismissed after my first year because I never went to class because I was always at the casino. Is there an idea of how much you lost? I don't have an exact amount, but I worked two or three jobs for most of my 20s. And I, I worked solidly from the age of 14 through that age of 32 with maybe a few month gap. And I lost everything I had. Every, I mean, I lost my paychecks for 14 years. Broadcasting his gambling addiction fight is as much therapy as it is a call to others like Stephen Delaney. The second half of 2020, I, was, I took approximately $20,000 from my 401k. And uh, basically I would max out a credit card and pay that off, tell myself I wasn't going to do it again. And then the next day I'd be racking up the credit card again. So two years ago, Delaney found Hatch's podcast as he struggled with an addiction to online sports betting. The New York delivery driver told me he has struggled with substance abuse in the past, but says with a gambling addiction, the help is harder to find. There's rehabs. There's multiple rehabs in the town that I'm delivering to right now. Um, I only know of a few gambling rehabs in the entire country. According to the National Association of Administrators for Disordered Gambling Services, it's seven times more likely for someone to have a substance use disorder than a gambling addiction. But the amount of public money put into substance use treatment programs is 338 times larger than gambling treatment programs. Gambling legalization is a state issue. No federal money is put toward gambling addiction treatment programs, unlike substances like opioids. And alcohol is a good model. You know, you've got to have community-based education prevention when you're young, and you've got to have all sorts of messages. So by the time the bartender cuts you off, that's not the first time anybody's talked to you about your, your alcohol use. It's, it's, you know, the last time someone's talked to you about it. Keith White is the head of the National Council on Problem Gambling. One effort he supports is requiring online gaming companies to use artificial intelligence software, like what Rasmus Kiergaard's company, Mindway AI in Denmark, is developing. It's being used currently in places like Europe and Asia, but not as widely in the United States. Chris, uh, you and I are two different and individual human beings. So is our behavior, and when it comes to gambling, uh, definitely our behavior would be uh, different and individual. The software, he says, acts as a friend who might tap you on the shoulder at a casino and ask if you need a break. It learns your playing style, how much you like to bet, which games you like to play, and how long you typically gamble. Then, if you start showing signs of what may be considered problem gambling, like bigger bets and chasing losses, it can tell the app or online casino to ask if you're okay. This year, New Jersey became the first state to require gaming operators use technology like this in gambling apps and online casinos. This isn't a, a silver bullet yet. 
and we may not know for a few more years whether or not it will be. Alan Feldman studies responsible gaming at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. His team is trying to learn more about the makeup of problem gamblers by studying how they handle money outside the casino. They're currently analyzing millions of anonymous gamer financial records and working on their own algorithm. The question remains, so what? You know, what's the distinction between someone who might just need a little tap on the shoulder and, and just say, hey, you know, you might want to slow down here and someone whom you need to you need to pull off the system and encourage them to go get treatment. Any roadblock you can put to make it more difficult for someone to bet uh, and continue to lose money is a good thing. All the responsible gambling experts I spoke with said AI could never replace the role of human intervention. You know, when you listen to a podcast right in your ear, nobody knows what you're doing. Nobody knows that you're trying to recover from gambling. Today, Delaney says he barely watches sports. This year's Super Bowl was the first game he's caught in two years. A lot of people who have a lot of knowledge in sports feel like we have this edge because we're so knowledgeable about players and sports. And if we've been watching our whole lives, we think we've got this edge. But we, what you don't realize is everybody's thinking and feeling that way. He also now has his own gambling addiction recovery podcast like Hatch. It's fantastic to know that somebody like Steven gets something out of it. Both hope that by allowing gamblers to hear their stories, the two can prevent gambling from becoming a problem. I mean, you know, it looks fun, it looks engaging, it looks great. And I've seen some that are a little scary. I've got more and more people calling me every week to borrow money I never asked before. And then I lost money betting. And I'm like, hmm. This professional sports better says the current climate can be dangerous for rookie gamblers, but he's turned a reliable profit for decades. His secrets next on The Race.